Hey guys, welcome to your next Encurses, Unicurses, and Curses Python programming tutorial by me, Root of the Null. Uh, he doesn't friggin' matter. Okay, so, in this one, we're gonna be jumping into colors. And these are probably some of the best parts of Encurses. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to go artsy with this, because, I mean, you're you're in this big black box, you're going to want color. And color looks cool, and it makes things so much more interactive and kind of appealing. Because it, 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 it gives it variety, and that's awesome. Okay, so in Curses, in Unicurses, in Encurses, whatever you want to call it, what we're working with right now, we need to call a function that will allow us to use color. Because if we were to run through the functions that creates the colors, and if we didn't call the function prior, we're going to be screwed. We're not going to get any color. It's just going to be black and white, and it's not going to look good. So... The function that we need to call at the beginning of our program, or when we've initialized our screen, it's called start underscore color. And I'm, I guess, I mean, I figure you guys can figure out what this function does. So I'm not even going to touch this one. <laughs> it, it, starts, it starts color. It initializes everything that we need to be able to have to allow us to use color. So, then we have to create pears. Not the fruit, <laughs> but this... The, the pairing between foreground and a background. And Encurses associates these pairs, or the foreground and a background, with an ID, or a specific number that will represent uh, a color setup, or a color sort of combination or mixture that you, as the programmer, are using. So we initialize these pairs, and the function that we do that with is INIT, or initialize, underscore pair. And you can see here it takes a pair number, a foreground, and a background. So we're going to start counting from 1, and then typically we'd go on and on and on, 2, 3, blah, 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 4, and it doesn't matter. That's going to be our pair number or an, our identification key and the number that we're going to reference this color by. So to keep things easy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use color red, that's going to be my foreground, so I'm going to change the text color from white, to which it is right now, to red. And the background is just going to be black, because that looks pretty cool, right? So that's initialized, that's running and everything. Now we have that set up. So, the way we can access this inside of our program is to access it as an attribute. Right? <laughs> I mean, you guys just learned about attributes, so we can apply those, that, that knowledge, that newfound understanding, to what we've been doing recently. So... Before we dive in, let's just go ahead and set it up so it just displays hello, and like right out onto the screen. If I get my shell open, if I run this, uh, it doesn't give me anything because I forgot to wait for a character. If I do this now, it says hello, and there's no color because we haven't set it up yet. All we did was initialize the pair. We aren't even using it. Okay, so if I break out of this, what I can do is turn on an attribute. And the attribute, this time, is going to allow us to use color, right? <laughs> now, I'm not going to use Atron, because uh, as much as cool as the function name is, it's really kind of aggravating to have to type Atron and Atroff every time we want to use this. So I just use it inline with our add string function. And now, as the second argument, as our optional attribute argument, I'm going to type in color underscore pair. And that's what's going to allow us to access one of these pairs or uh, colors that we've initialized. So that's a function, or I think it's a macro. I, I really have no idea. <laughs> but the, the parameter that it takes is the color number, or our pair number, or our ID. And you guys can guess, obviously, that we set this up to be 1. <laughs> so now when we run this code now, once it's saved and everything works for us... Oh, I SourceForge, go away, man. <laughs> If I run this, you can see hello in red. Dude, that's like mind-blowing, right? <laughs> so we can set that up, and we can even use it in conjunction with other attributes, right? So what we're going to do is we can add on or like sort of concatenate what we have here. Let's do a plus, and then a underscore bold, like the attribute that we saw in the previous tutorial. And we run this again, and it's hello in red, and it's even brighter, like it's, it stands out. Now we can set it up with underline, and that works out too, right? Boom! 
<laughs> we're mixing colors and attributes. We can put them together. We can use a text attribute and even the color attribute. So we initialize these with pairs, though, and they're set up with a foreground and a background. We Those are the information pieces that we kind of need to know, because we can change this to be color white or something like that's That's an option, right? Boom, there it is. Hello, white. And we can even maybe reverse this, because we have that, that attribute, A underscore reverse, you know? We can play around with it. We can mess with it and make it do what we want. There it is again. <laughs> okay, so the colors that we have for our options are, they're always going to have this color underscore syntax, just like the attributes do. So we can use control space and idle to see what else we have. Color black, color blue, color cyan, or however you say that, <laughs> color green, color magenta, uh, color red, color white, color yellow. Color pair doesn't do anything that's just like the macro that you saw me use down here. And uh, that's all you need to do. Like, those are our options. So they only have, like, I think it was maybe seven or eight colors in the terminal, but you can mix them and, like, be selective as to what represents what and how it should look inside of your, your code and in your program, and that's what makes it kind of fun. But, okay, now I want to show you guys um, what you can do if you don't want to set up a default background. Now, I'm kind of trudging in uh, unknown water right now. I don't remember how much I remember of this. But if I, pa if I run the function use default colors, if I run the program now, what will happen? Okay, so you can see that I still have my transparency in my terminal like I would normally have, but the background of only the text that we're adding is white. If I change this to black, you can see that exact same happens again. That, that, that same thing happens, but it's changing only the background of the text rather than the entire window. When we start the color, by default, everything goes to black. But if we pass in this function, or if we use the function, use default colors, it doesn't change anything other than what we're doing. So, what if we actually passed in negative 1 as a foreground color? So we don't actually use the default. If we, if we don't use uh, a specified like color black for the background, it will instead use the default transparent background. Will that work? Exactly, that works out perfectly fine for us. Now we can see that it's it's hello in, in red, just like we anticipated, but the background is transparent and it's the color that the terminal is currently using. We can even use this with the color, with the, the foreground color, right? If I run this now, hello is the default, I've seen the, the foreground color is white by default, and we can say like color blue can be our background. And there it is, color blue in the background. Boom! But we're still using white just the way we anticipated because we're using default colors. Let's add this in with a bold and see what happens. How does this look? If I run this, hello again. All right, all right. Now I'll take out use default colors and I'll use color, color blue, right? And uh, color black. So now what I'm gonna do is set this up to be a new line. And I'm going to copy and paste this, and this one, the top one I'm going to use bold, the bottom one I'm not going to use bold. Let's see how this looks. You can see that hello is just slightly brighter on the top one. The blue is a different shade of blue, and the other blue is different. We can use um, cyan up here, or cyan, cyan, I, I don't know how to say it, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> So this one's even brighter. It changes the color just slightly, and it even emphasizes it a little bit more. We can use... Um, a magenta, so one of them can be purple looking and the other is going to be pink looking. And that's how you can manipulate things. If you sort of combine the bold attributes, or at least the text manipulating attributes, and the color manipulating attributes, you can make some kind of cool looking stuff. But I wanted to show you guys how you can use color in end curses. It's simple, you just kind of have to have a pair number and a foreground and background and these things to work with it and the attribute in conjunction with anything else that you might be using. Okay, <laughs> I've talked more than enough in this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next tutorial. <laughs> Bye, guys.